Shalom. Good morning. Good afternoon. Whatever time it is when you watch this video. I want to warn about how important it is to screen what you put in front of your children's eyes. Um, we were watching this little cute cartoon over here called uh, Shaboom, which is a Jewish cartoon about seeing the good in all things, doing good deeds, Zadaka, righteousness. But then I felt compelled by the Ruach HaKodesh to look into this company and to make this uh, Bim Bam. And I saw this video. I was like, huh, that's curious, especially since the image it shows is a spaceship. And I'm not going to get into the geometry of the Earth here, but there are some interesting things here that really bear discussion on how important it is to review everything. I'm going to let him talk for a little bit, and then I want to talk about what he's saying. This is a story that has two parts. The first is a Bible story. The second part's a real thing that happened 40 years ago. Here's the Bible part. Once upon a time, before almost anything else had happened, everyone in the world spoke the same language and got together and decided to build a gigantic tower, a tower so tall that it would reach into heaven. It's not so clear why they wanted to build this tower, but long story short, God noticed it, hated it, and said, if this is how they've started to act, then nothing will be out of their reach. Now, so that's important, and that is from Bereshit or Genesis 11, 6. And let's read the verse in another translation for those of you that don't know Hebrew. And Jehovah said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this is what they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Go, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. And what he's saying is, oh, we don't know why Jehovah did this. And to a degree, he's right. Genesis does not record the details of this, like the book of Yeshur or Jubilees, or even the writings of Abraham. The reason, though, is still clear. Remember the commandment that God gave Noah after the flood in Genesis 9. Oh, where was that at? There we go. First first, Genesis 9 1. God said, God blessed Noah and his sons, and said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. And they all gathered in one place under one man. Now again, Genesis doesn't tell us that this was under Nimrod, but even if you don't see it directly, it should be obvious because it goes from talking about Nimrod in Genesis 10 to they're suddenly building bricks for the tower and this is what happened is that they lost their individuality as stones unique they said come let us make bricks let's be all alike all brick makers all with one goal to build a tower against Jehovah and that was the purpose and we'll see from his language here he understands that. He actually didn't. Yeah, sure. That's why you can't find the tower today. And shouldn't this be a red flag? Almighty Jehovah, uh, God scrambled languages so this thing couldn't be completed doesn't make him happy but listen to what he says next
Is it a terrible ending that Yehovah stopped us from doing something wicked? And listen, we said it was a terrible ending. Rebellion is in the heart of this group. Oh yes, it will, but not for good reasons. Precisely. Look at every single one of these is a copy of Babel and built for the same reason. Oh, look at that. The final tower. Now you know the purpose of the space program. Let's skip ahead a bit. Yeah. Okay, so in this bit he's saying that these golden records on Voyager have all the languages of the world on them. And the purpose is to talk to aliens, demons, and so that they can see, that even though Yehovah divided us, we're really united. So let's continue. There's one, the last bit. Alright. Alright, here we go. Oh, here we go. The Rebellion. Listen. That definitely gives me goosebumps, but not for good reasons. It's rebellion. Let's listen again. It has only made us build better, God. Mm. You have to be careful what you let into the ears and the eyes of your children. warning in Genesis nothing will be restrained from them which they imagine to do and there's a reason he uses this language if you know your Bible in Genesis 6 he says that every imagination of the heart of man is continually wicked in Genesis 6 5 and Elohim saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually and what does he say? That when we're united, especially not under his direction, nothing will be restrained from us. He's saying no evil deed will be stopped. And what does this guy say? Listen. Nothing will ever again be out of their reach. Well, Bim Bam, you're right, and you're going to be severely punished for teaching such wickedness. And those of you who watch this, I thank you. Hope, pray for you to have a good week. Father God, may we not have the heart of rebellion. May we approach your throne of grace with mercy, with your favor upon our eyes that we don't think that we can do anything we want that we don't turn our heart toward the world that we don't desire to unify against you against your will may your will be done not our own and father i pray you open the eyes and the ears of the saints around the world to help show them the truth your word your Torah is truth. Thank you. Amen.